Okay, I'm a little over a month in my boondocking experience. And um, I thought it's time to do another tour of my truck canopy setup. My camper build, if you will. So, without further ado, let's get at it. So, my bed's in the middle. I have these um, latching storage plastic con containers on the left-hand side. And um, I keep uh, this roll here. I used to keep it on these bungee cords on the ceiling, but it kept sliding back and forth, and I really need it where I can grab it. I have this uh, trash can at the end too. It's uh, just a normal, I don't know, one of these smaller trash cans and I just bungee cord it. Over here is uh, one of my pride, pride and joys is my Vector uh, refrigerator. It's a thermoelectric cooler and um, it's charged by my two batteries and I only run it during the day just so um, it doesn't run down my batteries. And I've um, just stayed at places where it's cool at night, where it stays at, you know, 40 degrees or cooler. And in the day, it's uh, like today, it's like, I don't know, 70 degrees. It's just perfect weather here. I have to keep this open for airflow during the day. So what I do is I kind of fold back my mattress and um, it allows airflow so that uh, the temperature um, can stay cooler. But at night, I uh, roll down my cushion so that I take advantage of the full six foot long bed. Underneath, I keep um, one, a toilet seat. It has um, the waste bags in it and toilet paper. But below that, I have this Sportineer, it's a shower um, toilet tent. And um, frankly, I haven't had to use it because um, I also bought a uh, membership over at uh, Planet Fitness. And Planet Fitness is great. They keep their bathrooms really clean. And um, I haven't actually had to pull these guys out really. Oh, there's my coffee. What I have is a, um, a four inch memory foam mattress. And then I have um, this sleeping bag, which I used to sleep inside of, but really now I just use um, this 20 degree bag on top. Unless I'm really cold. And then, um, then I'll get inside this and I'll put the other sleeping bag inside it. So when I was traveling in uh, New Mexico and Colorado, when it got down to like 10 degrees, or even colder at night, that's what I would do. I also have this um, this nice uh, electric blanket. It's a 12 volt powered blanket. So I can plug it in um, to my uh, outlet there. It goes to my two batteries that are behind my um, my seat of the truck over there. Let's take a closer look. So I replaced all of my uh, regular storage bins with, I think these are originally made for like file folders. It's nice because um, they have this locking latch, so it opens up. Some of this bungee here. So you can see it's hinged at the bottom. It provides a surface to, you know, this is my climbing bag on top. Um, holds everything securely. And when I lower the top, it doesn't just you know, just lie there, I guess, separately. It's actually attached. And... You can see that this latch keeps it securely closed even when you're traveling. 
So these storage containers are are on top of this uh, wooden shelf and it allows some storage underneath as well. So this is my storage side. I have these storage bins, I have space underneath, and then for oddly shaped stuff, bulky stuff, I can just strap on on top with some bungee cord. At my tailgate, we have these, uh, what do they call it, the window, back window lifters. This sort of rod here. And what I do is I attach a um, shower curtain. Oops, there goes my coffee. I attach uh, these shower curtain rods, but then I put uh, carabiners so that it's a quick open and close. And there I put different tools, like I have this brush that's super useful. I always keep a, a knife handy. And this one with the circle here makes it perfect for these carabiners. I have uh, also some extra bungee that I've tied here. I also have this, um, it's, I think it's originally for tea, it's from uh, Teavana, but I use it for coffee. You just put the coffee grounds in, let it steep for three minutes, and then has a plunger. So you put this on top of your, uh, say your coffee mug, and then it drains out. And um, I like this better than any of the other methods. Uh, French press or cowboy coffee percolator method. It's just really simple. Um, you make your coffee and then uh, you can just rinse it out. I also have this uh, water carrier. I think it carries, what, three gallons? Something like that. And um, it conveniently fits into this space right there, and with the um, with the tailgate closed, it keeps it in place. This is a extra shelf that I built in, and I put just a bracket, this shelf bracket underneath, and it just gives me another place to set things. It's uh, sturdy, really sturdy, actually. And I put a magnet here, and what I use that for, let me see if I find it, um, is I put a magnetic uh, washer, well, washer, a steel washer. This, I think, is um, some non-magnetic metal, so it doesn't work. So I, I um, glued this to the bottom, and it sticks there. But what I found is that I used a really strong magnet and it's actually <laughs> super, not super hard, but it's pretty hard to take it off. So I'll, I'll probably use a less strong magnet back here. But for now, um, it definitely holds it really securely so that uh, when I put the coffee maker on top, I have no fears of it falling over. I also use a Coleman Instant Start, I'm sorry, Insta Start grill stove. And it has a grill side. Oop. Has a grill side and a stove side. And I do like the grill side, but it uses a lot of propane, and it's also hard to clean. So I'm thinking of actually trying to find something that's just a um, a s single burner. That'll save some space. But in the meantime, this is what I use. All right, get to see it in action. Real sturdy on the magnet. <laughs> I can't even knock it over. Um, this has been brewing for three minutes. There you go. Get your coffee on. And I used to grind my uh, beans by hand, and I tried this battery-powered one, but it broke after like two, three days, so it wasn't worth it. Don't get those. <laughs> I might just get a regular grinder since I have a 2000 watt inverter. I just realized I'm just not that much of a coffee snob, so I'm using this Folgers and this is a half-calf. 
because I'm trying to cut down my caffeine, which only resulted me resulted in me drinking twice as much. <laughs> so, but you know, I'm hopeful that I can cut my caffeine. So yeah, that's a system, yo. Behold. I also have these uh, press lights, and I have them in three locations. Two in the front or the back of the camper, depending on your perspective. I have another one over here, you can see it. I have another one when the flap is down, it's kind of hard to see, but I have it also right there. So I pull this down and then I turn that guy on. And they light up the place pretty well. I also have, you know, my additional lights, such as this, um, the bar light right here, that I can reposition in different places. I also have my climbing equipment that's just stacked on top, and this um, sports cove, which is an awning that goes overhead. I actually left, left it in Colorado, so I have to go back and get it. Right now I use a, um, a tarp. A lightweight tarp and some bungee cords to do what I need to do if I want like some shelter from the sun. I can strap it over on the top. I have a video of that as well. But um, I want to get the uh, sports cove really so that I can put um, because it has a mesh that goes across the back. And I realize at night if I have light in here, I don't want insects to come in. So Sedona doesn't have a big insect problem. Uh, the occasional moth will come in, but really it's uh, it's beautifully insect free. It's uh, it's uh, been a nice spring experience here. So this is an interesting area. This is the um, I guess it would be the back right corner if you're facing the front of the truck. Okay, so I have my full vol 2000 watt inverter, but you know this thing is a little bit loud, frankly. Um, has uh, an internal fan. Actually, it isn't really all that loud, but it's just enough that it can be annoying, especially if you're trying to sleep. So I only run it during the day when I'm charging up things like my electric toothbrush, or if I want to use it for my uh, laptop, etc. It's there if I have something that needs that much power. So I really haven't used it to its uh, full capabilities. In fact, um, I also have this other one. So I have a 12 volt um, female cigarette plug, just like you'd find in all cars. But I have it in my camper. So this is an alternate energy source. And so I can plug my refrigerator directly into here. I also have various splitters just in case I need uh, more than one. And I also have another inverter, but this is only a 400, I'm sorry, a 100 watt inverter. What I realize is that um, for my energy needs, I really could have just gone with this. I, I actually don't really absolutely need one of these 2000 watt inverters. Only when I want to charge a lot of stuff very quickly. It's more efficient. Not more efficient, but it will um, it will charge things faster. So my cell phone, my laptop, if I run it through an inverter, it's, um, it just tr seems to charge faster. And so what I have is I plugged in the power strip that goes into the inverter which is running right now and I can power a lot of devices pretty quickly. A lot of my, um, what I found really convenient is to put magnets on things. So, you know, you have metal around anyway. I think it, magnets, if you have strong magnets, they can replace uh, Velcro and it allows you to move things around easily. So if I don't want it here, I want to put it over here instead. Yeah, because it's just more convenient there. I have this um, this bar light, and it takes triple A batteries, and it has a great light. 
and again it's on you know magnets too so I can you know put it different places wherever I find it convenient and along with the those I also have these magnetic hooks which I can also reposition so for example um, I could drill some of these things in but this is a really super strong magnet and um, you can hang all sorts of stuff off of this uh, that you'd be surprised at frankly my power strip also has a magnet on the back of it as well and also yeah I use different types <laughs> of pee bottles I still like the pee light because it has a bigger opening but milk jugs work as well the key is to find uh, something with a threaded cap. You don't want a snap lid. Trust me. You want a screw top lid. And over here is my climbing rope. I put things that I don't use as often in places that um, are kind of hard to reach. Whereas the things that I use all the time, I'll keep nice and handy. Um, I used to keep my clothes in these bins, but I needed the bins for other storage. And so right now, all of my clothes are in this duffel bag. And it's just right next to my, my bed, and if I run into it, it's, it's no big deal, because, you know, everything inside it is soft. I have, um... You know, this bubble insulation, but what I realize is that bubble insulation is a sure signal that you're living in your car. <laughs> and it's also uh, illegal in some states, I found, like a reflective material on windows. Um, I guess because it can shine light back. Uh, or, yeah, yeah, that's what I found. And so um, what I do also for stealth is I took a shower curtain and I cut it apart and I put it on one side. I, I just stapled it. And um, what I did is, is I roll it up and I have these leather straps with snaps to hold it up. So when I'm driving around I can see through my side window. And I just attached it with these screws you can take out from your window if you have these screws and you can um, get longer ones. I think this one's just the original and so that's how I attach these. I have since found out that this um, bubble wrap really isn't that insulative. Um, I think it insulates some but um, like right now I feel it and I can feel the heat of the sun on and coming through it. So I'm uh, I'm getting to the belief that this was an interim solution. It uh, it was fine for now, but I'll probably replace it with um, some board insulation or um, some sort of other foam insulation or something. I I haven't decided yet. Right above my bed, I keep a temperature gauge. Right now it's showing uh, 84 inside, and then I have a I have actually an an outdoor gauge that I can put outside in another location to see what the ambient temperature is outside. So from front to back of the canopy I have these hooks and then I put this um, bungee and um, this keeps the the flap that I use to cover my um, my back window it keeps it up but I also can hang other items so for example I think I'm getting out of focus here let's see here so I keep a light and I keep mace you know whatever else I need um, just hooked up here for quick use what this is a bicycle light and it gets really bright. I got it because it has this hook here that then I can attach to my bungee and 
you know, mace. Just stuff that I can grab real quick, you know, just in case. So I own this uh, machete. It's a M48 Hawk by United Cutlery. And um, let's see if I can get it out of here. And it's really badass looking, but really it's it's sort of impractical, especially with this back end. So I can't hammer it in harder to uh, split wood, because really that's what I use it for. It's not for like chopping people apart, although that's what its real function is. Um, so I'll probably just get a standard uh, camp axe. But the other thing I have that's found useful is this uh, machete. What a machete is really good for is for creating um, kindling. And so you, it has a wider blade and so you don't have to be as precise as with an axe. And you can hit the sides of logs and uh, get thinner pieces of wood easier than say you would with a, an axe. And so I find myself when I'm processing um, kindling for a fire that I'll grab this first, whereas I'll use the axe for splitting. That you can get uh, just because of the ergonomics of it, you can split something much easier than with a machete. It's just um, an extra weight at the end. But then I can run this at an angle along the wood to get thinner pieces of wood. So it's nice having a combination of both. But like I said, I'm probably going to replace this. But um, check out. There's a skull and crossbones there, believe me. Yeah, there it is. Can you see it? Can you see it? Okay, I think that's about it for uh, the camper build. I'll see if I can find anything else that might be of interest to the audience. Let's see here. In between the driver's area and the camper shell, or the canopy shell, uh, sometimes I like to keep this open. And so I can just easily reach back or, you know, whatever. And to keep down, say, wind, I have this, um, it's a, a pipe insulation that I got at Ace. And I think this is an inch and a half in width. This happens to fit um, between the cab and the camper. And I leave the bottom detached so I can just lift it up and it provides some wind that goes through but it limits the amount of wind. So if I just want a, a little bit of a breeze coming through, I'll open this up. And if I want more, then you know I can remove this as well. I have a folding solar panel with flexible solar panels. It's a, what do they call it, mono, um, mono crystalline solar panel. It's for, out of China, it's a Doxio brand. It uh, folds up nice and neatly. And I usually just set this under my uh, mattress. All right. So right now it's bringing in, I don't know if you can see that, uh, 3.4 amps. <laughs> and 13.7 volts. It's a um, pretty sunny day at the moment, so it's, um, it's not too bad. I'd like to get it up to 5 amps. <laughs> and oh yes, that's my solar charge controller. That's connected to uh, the solar panel, the Doxio solar panel, and also to my batteries that are located behind this seat. The way I get um, Wi-Fi is I have a Verizon uh, jetpack and um, these work really well, at least in the southwest states. So right now I'm boondocking on some federal land and um, let me see if I can get a better focus on that. Yeah, there we go. And um, I have this along with a booster and so... This is um, a Wilson booster. And essentially what it is, is it's uh, 
it's powered and then it runs to an antenna which has a magnet that I just stick on the top and I leave it there full time and um, what you do is you put your uh, MiFi into the cradle here and it boosts your signal and I have a magnet on the back so then again I can um, just tuck it back here and it sticks to the metal on the back here or I can put it in the camper shell on the other side and it just um, keeps it out of the way and that's how I get my uh, Wi-Fi in fact I don't have cell service except through Skype and I get that and I can use that anywhere as long as I have a, a MiFi or Wi-Fi connection and that's how I get my phone service I don't actually have a cell phone service I just use I, I pay as I go with Skype I think I paid like five bucks I've made maybe eight calls so far and I still haven't hardly made a dent in it I think I still have three dollars left on the five dollars I originally put into it and um, your coverage will vary but the antenna definitely helps and eventually I'll probably get a Yagi directional one um, just to increase the number of places where I get a, a good connection as I've noticed I have this um, plastic bin in my front seat on the passenger side and that's where I keep my Burton digital stove to go so on the days when it's too windy or I just don't feel like grilling or getting outside my vehicle I have this and um, it's nice you can bake with it you can braise with it you can even stir fry a little bit with it and um, you can do nearly everything um, the only thing you can do is it's not a pressure cooker so you can't have the reduced times but um, if you're okay with slow cooking um, the Burton stove to go is a great adjunct um, don't look at the Evan Williams bottom shelf bourbon okay okay I've already shown the batteries in the previous video so I won't go over them I'll just describe them they're uh, two battery boxes two batteries they're what is it uh, 88 amp hours each and they're AGM batteries so I'd like to get lithium at some point but um, they're quite expensive in the meantime AGMs they're great batteries they use in mobile mobile homes uh, RVs and um, marine applications so I'll likely use them for the next two three years Okay, the last two items that I find useful are this uh, a UTEC motion sensor light. So it has a solar power uh, light, motion detector light, and I put a, um, a magnet in the back and I can slap it onto my truck just for illumination if I want. It'll turn on when I move around but it's also a security device so um, you know if I'm sleeping in the back cab and the light turns on I know something has moved outside of my truck and if it's something that should be scared away then um, they'll probably be scared away with the light they'll think maybe I'm awake or something but um, the more you travel the more I don't know laissez-faire you start to get and I find myself using it less and less but I could see myself uh, using it in any place that I feel even slightly sketched out. Um, you put these babies on the side and sleep a little bit more securely. Then I also have this, uh, these in kind of inflatable lights. It's also solar powered, so it's great. I'll put them on the dash, both of these guys, and they get charged up during the day, and then I can use them at night. This roll away table is great it's easy to set up it's very sturdy i think it's like supposedly like 100 pounds or something ridiculous that it can hold and it's fabric so uh, but it has these spines so you can roll it up my only criticism is that you can't 
really wash it uh, all that effectively. So you, it's like you brush it off or you vacuum it or you, you, you spray it down and wipe it. Um, but it would be nice if you were able to remove all of the rods and then just stuff it in the machine, washing machine. Oh well. And then I have my REI chair. It's basically what they call, what is it, that Heliolite? I can't remember what the, the brand name. But they just rebranded it with the REI brand. And then uh, there's my tent, my ultralight. Um, supposedly it's a two-person tent, although I think it would be a tight fit with two people. And I don't actually sleep in it, I just use it to, uh, to reserve my boondocking space. So most people, actually everyone, I've never had a problem with someone trying to take over a space that I have my tent set up at. And I've never had any problems in the past month of anyone taking any of my stuff, but the only thing that I leave behind is this tent. And I was thinking about getting a cheaper tent, because this is uh, one of the pricier models, it's hyper light and compact small. And so I was thinking it's a, might be desirable, but you know, at a certain point you have to kind of trust your fellow man. So, <laughs> okay, so that's my uh, truck, pickup truck canopy tour. I don't think I have anything that's more notable. I have the typical stuff, I guess. After that, it's just um, extra stuff in case I break down, or some car stuff, or things that I need just in case that are in the storage bins. And, um, yeah. That's pretty much it. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you on the road.